What you want to do right now, you want to start off with the jab because you're a tall guy. What are you, 6'3", 6'4"? All right, so you're a guy like you're tall. You want to keep your jab. You want to keep the jab. Pop, pop. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most difficult martial arts skills to master. I don't have much to say rather than to tell you I love this sport. For this list, we'll be ranking the martial arts disciplines that are the most challenging to master, whether that difficulty be due to technique, interdisciplinarity, or accessibility. Did we leave any out? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Boxing. They don't call it the sweet science for nothing. Right hand, two right hands, three right hands. Whoa. There's actually a lot that goes into the sport and practice of boxing, much more than simple punching technique and footwork. There's psychology involved, both with regard to one's own abilities as well as the approach of the opponent. That's what you do, jab, jab, yes. jab, boom, boom. You, got, you have to bring this back before this. And that's the knockout punch. Study, thought, and planning need to be placed into the preparation for every fight. And it's this sort of seriousness that separates boxing from simple street fighting. This depth is what makes boxing so varied among its practitioners, while also lending it so much legitimacy when it comes to cultural and historical context. I told you today, I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again that make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. Right. Then you might get me. Number nine, Tai Chi. Oh, hold it, new guy. See that? That is Tai Chi. I ordered Chai Tea. Tai Chi is a very popular form of martial art practiced by people around the world. However, most people take up Tai Chi for its health benefits, both mental and physical. The philosophy of balance, of yin and yang, is integral to Tai Chi, as is the beauty of its physical aesthetic. This isn't to say that physical competition, including weapons demonstrations, doesn't take place between Tai Chi students, but finding a knowledgeable instructor willing to spend time focusing on the more aggressive aspects of Tai Chi may be a difficult task. Number 8. Kickboxing Boxing is a term that encompasses a wide variety of different substyles from around the world, with one of the most popular being Muay Thai kickboxing from Thailand. Kickboxing's popularity makes it easy to learn, but difficult to master, due to there being a wide array of styles. For one to participate, they must have unmatched endurance and skill. Due to a lack of organization and a main governing body, it's often associations and networks that showcase some of the best kickboxers in the world, who bring together punches, kicks, and cardiovascular strength to create their own unique styles. Due to the variety, it is often difficult to prepare for. Number 7. Bakom Bakom, also known as Vakon, is something of a hybrid form of martial arts, combining elements of jujitsu with values that are, well, let's just say a bit more dirty. This is because Bakom was reportedly developed in Peru by a former Marine and convict by the name of Roberto Puch Besada, with the intent of making it as deadly as possible. That said, you're not going to find Bakom schools in your local strip mall, nor are you likely to see exhibitions on television. Instead, the objective here is to use anything and everything at your disposal, from chokeholds to low blows, to devastate your opponent in a fight to the death. No mastery required. Number 6. Okichita It could prove to be a challenge tracking down a local master of Okichita, due to the fact that teaching of this martial art can be traced back to the Native American Plains Cree. Specifically, Okichita is the result of Canadian Plains Cree martial artist George J. Lapin, who combined his Taekwondo teachings with the traditional wrestling and weapons training of his youth. As a result, Okichita is another sort of hybrid that encapsulates pieces of Judo and Hapkido, among others, while also existing as an indigenous martial art of Canada. There's honestly a lot to like about both the physical and philosophical aspects of Okichita, but its northern-centric location may make it difficult for those seeking out a teacher. Number 5. Kalari Payet The next martial arts discipline on our list may not be comparatively well-known to other combat sports, but it's actually existed in one form or another for over three millennia. The origins of Kalari Payet hail from India and are taught in accordance with the Hindu religion, emphasizing the graceful balance of both offense and defense. The art of Kalari is practiced with the use of one's bare hands, sticks, 
and heavy swords and shields. Galari Payette isn't easily accessible to the average martial arts student, however, since it's one of the only disciplines that stresses weapons and even armor over hand-to-hand -hand combat. The, the wooden weapon also, it will take three to four years to complete. So then we go to the metallic weapon. That is the Ankatari. That is the step-by-step step we go to that. And the metallic weapon, first we practice with the dagger. Then we go with the sword and shield. Then with the spear. Then with the uh, flexible sword. This makes Kalari Payet intrinsically linked with Indian culture, to the point where an academy was founded in the city of Tiruvanan Tapuram in January of 2021, in an effort to boost tourism and to teach Kalari Payet to willing students. Number four, Dambay. It's difficult to imagine a martial art discipline as brutal as Dambe being given the green light for competition outside of its native Nigeria, but that's exactly what was proposed by the country's Ministry of Youth and Sports Development in 2019. Dambe was originally practiced by butchers in the northern part of Nigeria. They would fight for glory or to settle scores and attract unmarried women. Dambe uses makeshift weapons of cloth and chain, with a knockdown occurring if an opponent falls to the ground. It's a violent sport, often resulting in broken bones on both sides, yet simultaneously something that's extremely important to the identity of Nigeria's Hausa people. That being said, the necessity for travel to Nigeria, not to mention finding a Dambe teacher among the Hausa, makes learning Dambe for laymen extremely unlikely. Number 3. Lerdrit Why is Lerdrit so difficult to master? Well, for starters, it's an elite form of Muay Thai boxing that's taught to Thailand's elite police and royal guard, and thus not open to outsiders. Should you actually be a Thai national, and a member of the military, and wish to learn Lerdrit, well, we hope you have a mean streak because you're gonna need it. This is due to the fact that Lerdrit stresses short-range strikes with a particular emphasis on lethal force. It's not a stretch to compare Lerdrit to Israeli Krav Maga, in that it's designed to disable or kill an opponent as quickly as possible, focusing on weak points and sensitive areas for a quick finish. Number 2. Bokator The martial art of Bokator was developed on the battlefield by Khmer troops in Cambodia to deliver maximum damage at close quarters. There's a dizzying number of moves to learn if you're curious to learn Bokator, over a thousand if you seek the equivalent of a black belt. More knockouts come by way of elbow than any other strike. Knockouts such as this elbow slash. The first step is to close the distance and block an opponent's attack with the outside hand. San Kim Shan is largely responsible for the renewed interest in Bokator among martial artists today, having escaped Cambodia under the threat of death by the Pol Pot regime for teaching native Bokator in his homeland. Shan Kim San is the only remaining grandmaster of Bokator. The reason for this is the Cambodian civil war during which almost all the masters of this ancient martial art were murdered. That link between Bokator and Cambodia is still strong today, although the discipline and some of its remaining teachers are reticent to expand beyond the country's boundaries. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu To paraphrase Bushnell's law, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is easy to learn, for some, but difficult to master. Uh, it consists of chokes, submission holds, uh, joint locks, uh, and it's a very strategic way to fight on the ground. This isn't only due to the comparatively popular and readily available Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu schools and instructors, but the intense level of competition out there among those who compete locally and professionally. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the evolution of the art that a Kodokan member, Matuya Maeda, spread around the world in the early 20th century. Most notably, the Gracie family of Brazil further refined the art and eventually came to popularize their version worldwide. The difficulty of Jiu-Jitsu doesn't only lie within its public profile, but also how many years it will take the average student to attain the equivalent of a black belt, roughly 10 to 12 years. Even then, true mastery hasn't been achieved, but rather just the first step on the long road to knowledge. It's a whole lifestyle that involves. And everyone that's on the mat that's tough today, they didn't born that way. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.